Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video we're going to take a look at how we can add behavior in our services in ASP.NET Core without actually modifying the services themselves. We're going to achieve that using the decorator pattern. The decorator pattern is a very well known Gang of Four design pattern that is used to add behavior to a class or a service without actually modifying them. We're going to see how we can use Scrutor, a package created by Christian Helling, to actually achieve this in a very elegant and clean way. What I want to focus on, and eventually you're actually going to understand the pattern itself because of this example, is how we can use it in our SP Dora Core application. And I'm going to go with the most common example in this scenario. This video is part of my clean.net core series, so if you don't want to miss any episodes, make sure you subscribe and ring the sub notification bell. You can get the code for this video in the description down below. So, let's see a use case here. I have my customer's controller, and I have a get customer by ID endpoint. Now, in a very huge system like Amazon, you don't want to hit that endpoint and go to the database every time to get the user's information, which is what we're currently doing in this repository. Of course, now I'm using an in-memory implementation, but imagine this actually going to a database. What you want to do instead is you want to cache this information for some time and then clear the cache and get that information again, and this will make it more efficient. Realistically, you would use something like Redis Cache as a distributed cache mechanism, but what we're going to use in this example is an in-memory cache because we don't really care about this distribution. In your system, you might care, and that might be a better way to go about it. So, looking at this repository, how would you add a caching layer around it? Some might say just create a private read-only concurrent dictionary here and then just add some logic here. And technically this would work. The problem with that is that the class is doing now two things. Managing the cache and also going to the database and fetching some data. The name doesn't actually reflect the functionality anymore because this is now a cached customer's repository that actually goes to SQL to get some data back as well. And this is a very long name. What we want to do is break this behavior but still add the caching layer. And we can do this very, very easily with Scrutor. And Scrutor, as I said again, it's a NuGet package, so we're going to go ahead and install it as a NuGet package. And I'm going to say Scrutor. You'll find it here, it's the only one. And we're going to go ahead and just say install. And we we're going to very easily install it. And this package adds two extension methods in our DI configure services method. The first one it adds is the services.scan, which we're not going to take a look into in this video. We're going to take a look into that in a future video. And the other one is the services.decorate. And this is what we actually are going to use. So the ultimate goal is to add a caching layer around this class. And the way I'm going to go about it is first I'm going to create a directory inside my repository. So I'm going to say cached. And then in that cached repository, I'm going to say add a new class. And I'm going to name this class cached customers repository. And now what I've seen many people do is they would go ahead and they're going to extend the implementation of the customers repository. And then they would just override the method and go about it that way and then modify the startup code to do that. This would also work, but now you're unnecessarily adding inheritance in your whole mix when you don't really need to do that. The other approach that people are using is they would inject the other service in the constructor and they would take it from there. This would also work and this is probably a more appropriate way. And even better, you would actually inject the interface itself. And what we're going to do will look very similar to this, but with a twist. So what I want to do is not just use the constructor, but I'm going to go ahead and instead of adding inheritance, I'm actually just going to implement the iCustomers repository as if this was the actual repository. And I'm also going to inject in my constructor and take a look into this because this is very important. You might get confused because of this. It might not make any sense. But what we're going to inject is the iCustomers repository interface. And I'm going to name this customers repository. And then I'm also going to make a private read only iCustomers repository field, which of course I'm going to initialize with my customers repository. Now, what is going on here? Because you might say, hey, if I do that and I run it and I try to instantiate this class, well, first, DI wouldn't know if I want the cached customer repository or my customer's repository because they're both now registered in DI. And you would be right. 
And also, how do I know that this won't end up in a self-referential loop of resolving itself over and over again, causing a stack overflow exception? You're right, this is what would actually happen. But with Scrooter, I can go here and I can say under my add singleton i customer repository line services dot decorate, which is what we added using Scrooter. And I'm going to say decorate the i customers repository interface or service with the cached customers repository implementation. Now, what this will do internally is it will still register this as a singleton and then decorate this as a singleton as well. But if I go in this cast customers repository class and I try to inject its own interface, Scrutor will create a redirection internally to know that this will actually be this implementation behind the scenes the non-cached one and everything else that will use this interface an example would be the get customers id handler this will be the cached customers repository this is how we will be redirecting in di and what this will do is it will allow us to use the actual service implementation in our cached layer but not use that same one anywhere else. Anything else will use the cached repository. And let me just implement this very, very quickly to show you exactly what I mean. So temporarily, I'm just going to store this into um, a concurrent dictionary and it doesn't really even need to be concurrent. Um, but let's just add. So GUID and customers DTO goes here and I'm going to call this the cache and I'm just going to initialize it to a new concurrent dictionary. And what this will do now here in the get customers async method is it will try to see if the key exists. So if cache.contains key customer ID, then return cache customer ID. And we're going to say task dot from result. And if it doesn't, then it will get the customer DTO using the service, which is the non-cached one because we're injecting it in itself. And I can just say customer ID and this will go to the non-cached one here. And now I can actually just remove this because I will change my method to be async. And now getting the customer, I know it's not in the cache. So I will say try add customer ID customer and then return customer by the way yes i could use the get or add method of the concurrent dictionary but i want to lay the logic a bit clearer for you watching it and for people with not so much experience uh, but you're completely right i could use get or add and now with this code with this new class and this startup.cs what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add a breakpoint here and i'm also gonna add a breakpoint in the handle method of my get customer by ID handler. And the last breakpoint I'm going to stick in is the get customer async. Let me just run the application now and hit the endpoint and show you what happens because it's really interesting. So here I have postman and I'm going to click send. And as you can see, the get customer by ID handler is hit. Now, if we see what type is the customer's repository injected here, you can see in Rider's tooling that it's the cached customers repository. So when I step into this method, it will go in the cached customers repository, not in the customers repository that's uncached. But if I look into what this one here is, which is the same interface, you can actually see that it is the non-cached version. It's this redirection I was talking about. And now we can use the non-cached here but still return through the cached one for everybody else. And now we can check that if the key is not contained, then we're getting the customer. And this is where we hit the non-cached layer. And this returns, as you can see here, a customer DTO, my name. And then we add that into the cache. And you can see that the cache now has this value. And then we just return the customer. So if I go in the front end, you can see that now we are returning Nick Chapters with this ID. And if I send this request again, 
Again, we hit the same handler. It's again the cached repository here. But when we step into that, now it is contained in the cache because it's a singleton and it will just find it from the cache and return it. And as you can see, it all works perfectly. Really, that's all I want to show you in this video, how with a very clean way we can actually decorate our interface and our services to add behavior without actually modifying the class itself because we would break the single responsibility principle. And yes, there is some magic involved into it, but once you actually understand how decorate works, it's very easy to work with. And I will link in the description down below a blog from Andrew Locke and a blog from Stephen Smith Talking about this pattern, Andrew Locke also talks about Scrutor itself using a very similar example. But really, this is one of the most common things you would do using this pattern, a caching layer around it. But there is room for other things as well. And Steven's blog actually talks about other use cases extensively. So I highly recommend those ones. They will be in the description down below. That's all I had for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, we're going to find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well to get notifications of new episodes and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.